Hmm. I wonder, what do we have sitting over here? It's an LT engine. Direct injection. Continuous variable valve timing. Air fuel management, high compression. What could we possibly do with it? We're going to do something a little different today. We're sitting here in the shop amongst these monster Jeeps. We've got a 500 horsepower LT over here. We got a supercharged V6 over here. We got a 700 horsepower LSA next to us. But we're sitting in a 3.6 JL. So this is the new JL. We don't have to put the key in. It uses one of these key fob things. Let's step on the brake and push the start button. Let's take a look at, uh, at the interior of this JL. Over here we have our headlight switch, which is pretty similar to the Wrangler, but instead of being on a stock, it's on the panel. We've got the auto setting just like the later model JKs had. This dial here is for ambient lighting. We actually do have lights down on the floor now on the JL. This over here is to dim the panel and to turn the, uh, once, let's turn the lights on. So this will control our panel lights and it can also turn on the interior light. Moving over here, we have our turn signal switch. High beams. We've got our windshield wiper switch, which is very similar to before, including the rear switch. This little green light on the dash right here is telling us that the headlights are on. If I turn the headlights off, that should go off, and our lights come back on. We've got this digital display we'll talk about in a second. Let's take a look at the two-wheel drive. We actually have a little display for the two four-wheel drive indicator. And yes, these transfer cases are tough to get between the gears, just like the JK was. You gotta roll and all that. I'm sure it'll break in, but it's, it's basically the same as a JK. This is not an all-wheel drive. This is just a part-time. Looking at the steering wheel, it's very similar to before. We've got our information center here, our Uconnect or phone buttons here. Cruise control here, which is basically exactly the same as before. We got on off here. You can see that we have a display of what the cruise is set to, which is pretty nice. And then we have cancel, resume, etc. Now, if we look at the display, you'll see that on the top left corner there we have our temperature, and then next to it we can scroll through pages. So we're on page one right now. Now we're on page nine. Let's go back to one. One is a digital speedometer. Two is vehicle information like coolant temp. Now you'll notice that you can scroll left and right on this page. So if we look at the steering wheel control, we have our left and right buttons. So if we scroll right, we have coolant temp, trans temp, oil temp, oil pressure, oil reset. Now I did read the manual and it says you can do the oil reset through this cluster or with a traditional pumping the pedal like the JK. So you have two, two options there. And system voltage. Now this does appear to have smart charging, just like the GM uh, vehicles do. So you're gonna see some pretty low and some pretty high charging voltages based on what the smart charging demands. It's not like a typical set it to 13.7 or 14.5 and you go. Um, this base is the charging base, based on demand. Uh, there's our tire pressure, which I'm sure is going to be a pain, and hopefully we'll be able to program t uh, pressures in that we want with the larger tires. And we're back to coolant temp. So let's go to page three. This is showing us our four-wheel drive engagement. Right now we're in two-wheel drive. Now here's something that's interesting. If you look at the front wheels, it has an angle sensor. So you can actually see the wheels turn and I'm not turning it much because I'm parked but uh, when I was driving it you can actually see the wheels turn on this display and this will indicate when the front axle is locked or I'm sorry the center diff or transfer case is locked and whether it's engaged in two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive let's go to the next page 
we have fuel economy. Now you can see the average there. Uh, we can reset it. There's current or there's instant mileage on the right or current and there's the range left on the left. So this is really all the same information that the JK displayed. It just displays it in this instrument cluster rather than through a digital or a vacuum fluorescent display. And then of course you can see your fuel gauge and your coolant temp on the left and the right and I kind of like those. Let's keep going. Tripometer, basically it tells you the runtime, the miles per gallon you're getting, average, and there's 204 miles on this vehicle on the trip on trip A. Uh, I'm assuming there's a trip B. Let's see. Yep, there's trip B there. Back to trip A. All right, let's keep going. Start stop. Now this was a little bit interesting for me. Um, when I first started driving this and I came to a stop, the engine died and that's always concerning however I knew it had start stop something I noticed was if you're pushing on the brakes hard the start stop acts differently than if you're pushing on the brakes lightly so if you're pushing on the brakes hard the engine will just basically shut off and then when you let the brake off it'll restart when you get to go but if you hold it on lightly the engine does not have the same propensity to, to turn off so there's something going on there and that's something I need to learn a little bit more about but personally I do not like start stop uh, I do not think it's worth the wear and the tear on the electronics and the engine the way I look at it I'm an old-fashioned guy and engines basically suffer most of their wear or a lot of their wear from from a cold start now we're not doing a cold start but we are doing a start and I feel that the fuel savings, whatever that is, may not be worth the trade-off for engine wear and electrical system wear and loading the battery and all that. Um, we'll see how that works down the road. I mean, start-stop is not a new technology. It's been around for a while, but I personally don't like it. Now, this button here can turn on and off start-stop. So I'm glad that Jeep did that. It gives us that option. Let's keep going. Audio. So that this does have the Alpine... Uh, Wahoo radio in it with all the stuff which we'll look at in a minute there's no stored messages I assume if there was a trouble code or something it would tell you and there's one more left page 9 which is a screen setup so if we go to screen setup basically all it does is let's say we want to change that upper left parameter I can change it to anything I want compass nothing time whatever I like having outside temp up there so let's choose that and then we can do the same thing with the upper right and whatever. Um, you can also put current gear, but current gear also displays at the bottom. Let me show you that. Um, if I move this shifter back into drive, something I am extremely happy Chrysler did was they made a separate manual gate. So now instead of just bump shifting it, you move it to the left, then you can bump shift up and down in this separate manual gate. And that's really big for me. So you can see I'm an M2 right now. Drive. Let's bump it. Now it's only allowing me to choose one or two. So I'm going to have to go ahead and check and see uh, what the actual strategy is. Uh, but let me tell you something about this transmission. This is a ZF8 speed and the one that they install behind the Pentstar is good for 500 newton meters of torque. That comes out to just over 360 foot-pounds of torque. So I'm not sure I'd want to put a V8 in front of this particular transmission. Now I am told that the diesel is going to have the beefier ZF8 speed that probably could handle a V8, but if we're talking LS3, we're talking 450-ish foot-pounds of torque. And I would not put an LS3 in this JL just for legal reasons. The LS3 was essentially phased out in 2015 in North America. However, they did make variations of it right up through 17, but I'm not sure they made any variations of it in 18 and above. And the JL is going to continue to be built for the next probably 8 or 10 years. Let's go back to page 1. And you're going to see that's our speedometer display, and we can go to, to kilometers per hour if we choose. So we got a tachometer over here. We got our speedometer over here. Now they do not have the dual scale like they do in the JK, where it shows kilometers and miles per hour. This is just purely a miles per hour vehicle, and I'm assuming the exports are kilometers per hour, which is fine with me because those numbers can always get confusing. This 
touchscreen interface is kind of interesting. Like right now we're set to climate control. You can see that the fan is set to two. Now there's a couple of different ways you can change this. Let's just say I wanted to go from this mode to the up and down mode. I could press that and that changes my mode. If I wanted to change my fan speed, I can press that and change my fan speed. But at the same time, if I come down here to my AC control or high back controls, I can change the mode by pushing this button and it scrolls through the same thing. So you have redundant controls. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of that, but it doesn't bother me too much. We can also choose our AC on and off here, just like the JK. We have an auto mode for the AC here just like the JK had starting in 2011. If we want to manually control our fan speed, it's here. If we hit auto, it overrides the manual and then goes into the auto mode. And what the auto mode, mode means is when you select your temperature, and you can do passenger and driver independently, and I'll show you that. When you select the temperature, the HiVac controller chooses the fan speed and the mode based on what you select. So the more you go towards hot, the more it's going to blow out towards your feet. The more you go towards cold, the more it's going to blow out towards your face. And then it will also change the, uh, the compress control the compressor cycling and change the modes. Now, let's just say I wanted to increase the temperature on my side, on the driver's side. I can do it right here. And you'll notice that when I change it here, that the passenger side follows it. So the driver's side is the master. I can also change it down here, as you can see. If we want the passenger side to be different than the driver's side, the passenger side, passenger can come over here and change it. So you'll see now that the passenger and the driver's side are not synced. If you want to sync them back, boom, you hit that and then it'll change the passenger to whatever the driver was. So we have our mode here, passenger temperature here, driver temperature here. This obviously is your windshield defroster, your rear defroster, recirculation, all basically the same stuff that the JK had. I like the fact they have a mute button. I really like having mute buttons because if, if I need to listen to something, an ambulance, whatever, I like to be able to press mute. This is your start-stop button as we talked about. This is your traction control on-off or your ESP partial mode. This is your hill descent. This is another nice feature. Trying to find how to turn the screen off on a dark night can be tough. So they give you a button for it. You just push that and your screen turns off. Now, looking at the other features of this radio, we can go to the radio mode and we have all of our stations. And of course you can hook in uh, auxiliary channels and stuff. I'll show you that in a second. We have media. Um, media, if my phone were connected to this right now, you would see text messages come through and, and voicemail and all that. Back to climate control, here's apps and you can download apps. Now something that Chrysler did that I kind of think is a little, a little shady is this vehicle is capable of navigation, but they don't include it in the package that we got, which is the 24S Sport package. You have to buy it separate. And it's, an, it's just a, a software upgrade, but they charge you separate for it. And I'm going to go ahead and get it, but it would have been nice if they included it. Obviously your phone set up. I do not have my phone with me, but it is paired and I didn't bring it with me on purpose because every time my phone beeps or a text message comes through or or a call comes through, it it automatically Bluetooths right to this radio. We got our compass. The dealership told me that you got to drive this thing around in circles, do 360s with it to calibrate the compass, and I haven't done that yet. And then of course we got our settings to do our language and units and all that stuff. Now, let's go back to the radio. And I'm going to turn the interior lights on here. Hopefully that'll light this thing up a little bit. Um, if you look down here, it says media. And if you flip this up, we've got our auxiliary input down here. It's not up on the radio like the JK. We've got a micro USB and a full size USB here rather than up on the radio. And the JK didn't have the micro USB. So I find that's really nice to charge my phones and whatever. And I like having the micro USB because a lot of my devices use that. We've got the same old window switch setup as well as uh, the child lock which I will use because I have kids and then we've got our 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter now I like the early JK's where it gave you two lighters one was powered with a key on and one was powered all the time I really like that the fact that these are only powered with a key on kind of limits you when you want to hook a phone up or something when you're parked and the key is off I don't particularly like that this is our start stop button basically with the key in the vicinity of the vehicle you push on the brake and you 
you hit the button and, and the vehicle starts. Same thing if you want to turn it off. Transfer case is essentially the same thing as a JK. Now the Sierra does have an option for all-wheel drive. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of that. There's a lot of stuff going on in those transfer cases. There are some Chevy transfer cases that did support high and low, meaning they're a two-speed box along with all-wheel drive. And again, there's a lot of stuff going on in those transfer cases, so I'm not a big fan of them, but it may be something that we support in the future. I do believe there's some other options that we don't have, like a 110 outlet. Um, but this, this JK is very highly optioned, and I must say that compared to, a, to the JKs, it does seem um, upscale. So I do like the ambient lighting. Let's turn that off. That way, if you drop something on the floor, you can find it instead of fumbling around in the dark. Early JKs had relatively small visors. Let's check these out. They are telescoping, which came out in 2010, I believe, on the JKs, which I really like, because that way when you flip it over here, you can block the sun better than if it was just a single telescope. Um, I believe these are for your garage door opener. This was part of the convenience group that we got. I don't remember what the package was. So that's pretty nice. And then, of course, to keep the wife or girlfriend happy, you got the lighted mirror. Oh, look at that. It's lighted. That's nice. Let's see if we got that over on this side. Yeah, we do. So, so far, no issues with, uh, with the JL as far as technology goes. Really, everything I'm seeing here is almost the same as a JK. It's just... It's just presented to you differently. This color screen display is really nice, but honestly, um, it's giving you the same information that the JK gave you. I'm not really sure there's any advantage to that. Let's take a quick look at the key fob. So we have a key fob that, I'm guessing this is for the doors and the tailgate because I don't see any place to put it here. And then we have our lock, unlock, remote start press twice and panic so it's exactly the same as a JK hopefully this thing is going to have more range than the JK because the JK you practically had to be next to the vehicle for it to work you got the dual level uh, console cover and we do have another USB down here and I'm guessing some of the packages will also have another 12 volt outlet we have rear switches for the rear seat passengers and again I like the fact that we can lock our windows so our kids can't roll it down Let's get out and see if we can put child locks on these doors, or on these windows. And by the way, the door handles no longer use a button, you just pull out. And yeah, there it is right there. Turn that and then kids can't open the door from the inside. I'm not sure what that is. It's some, I think that's a Sunrider top if we take off the front freedom panel tops. So we got some new light designs in these fenders. That's going to pose some work for the aftermarket fender guys to get these integrated. I do like these new hood latches. It's kind of like a suitcase latch system versus the old JK. Now I didn't mind the old JK because you still were pulling down. What I didn't like about the JK was the original rubber straps were too weak and at faster speeds the hood would flutter. So you can go to polyurethane or steel or whatever, aluminum. Um, but these look really secure. And somebody told me that these will actually work on a JK. I'm not sure if that's true or not. But basically you just... Um... So let's open this hood up. And we do have fog lights on this one. Tow hooks. Interesting uh, Jeep decided to put grill inserts in these. They didn't on the JKs. The hood prop is now on the hood rather than on the body. Here's our good old 3.6 Pentstar engine. This is a stop-start engine, obviously. They have done some reconfiguration of this engine compartment. Something that I think I like is they put the coolant bottle back here. And in the JK, especially when you had a V8, you were very limited on where you could put the coolant bottle. So having it back here in the firewall actually makes a lot of sense. Now you guys that are going to be putting compressors and stuff in here are going to have a little bit of an issue, but I kind of like the, the fact that they, they have the bottle up on the firewall. We do not have a cap on the radiator, so that means that's a pressure pot. That means that this cap is most likely, yep, 21 PSI. 
So that means we got a pressurized bottle on this one. We got two hood pins. Now the JK came equipped with a hood pin if you had remote start, so it wouldn't start with a hood open. I'm not sure why the JL has two, but I'm sure we're going to find that out pretty quick. You notice we've got our windshield washer reservoir here. Basically it looks like the same computer as the JK, but they mounted it sideways. If you remember on the JK, the windshield washer bottle was a little more forward, and then this was slotted in sideways. Looks like our hydraulic control unit and ABS module are right back where they were, as well as our master cylinder and brake booster. Now I did notice that there's a couple of extra bottles on some of the other JKs. One is for the intercooler on the four-cylinder turbo, and one is, I believe, for hydraulics. I'm not exactly sure what for, maybe for the diesel, but I don't have one to look at, so I can't really comment on that. We got our power steering over here. Our battery has now been flipped with a tip -em. Most of you know that the battery used to be in the back and the tip -em used to be in the front. Let's just hope that this tip -em is more reliable than the JK tip -em. tip -em stands for Totally Integrated Power Module. Essentially, this is the gateway module as well as the fuse block. Never been opened. Let's see what it looks like. Well, looks like you got to take the cover off on this. It doesn't flip up. Probably not the most ergonomic design. You guys might lose these. So look at that, we got these little micro fuses. But overall, uh, this is a computer. This is the main gateway for the entire network in this vehicle. Look at all these power outputs. Now I'm guessing this is for fan, engine performance, and other stuff. Haven't really got into the electronics yet. Here's our grounds. Looks like they beefed them up over the JK. Uh, having the tipping back here is probably not a bad thing gives us more room to do with what we want to do. Similar air filter looking box. This is obviously where our cold air comes in. It's going to be sucking air from the gap in the hood, just like the JK did. We got a relatively beefy fan. You can tell by these cables. Look how large they are. This third little wire is going to be for your pulse width modulation, which is going to be controlled by the tip -um. So they are still running a pretty small radiator. I'd say that's about 35, 38 millimeters, maybe 40 at the most. But it does seem to have a pretty beefy fan. So maybe they can overcome a lack of capacity with a more powerful fan. They did stick with the reverse alternator, which I've never been a fan of. Penstar definitely has an odd layout on the accessory drive. Looks like you guys will have room to do your dual batteries. Looks like they did make an effort to beef up the power and grounds based on what I'm seeing. Here's our AC line. I'm sure we're running 1, 2, 3, 4 in this. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4 YF. But instead of running these lines across the top of the motor, it looks like they're running them across the fender well now. That should make things easier. So overall, this engine compartment is very similar to the JK. Just like the instrument cluster, they laid things out differently, but the overall function is similar. We're running 020 weight oil, just like the LTs are. And to be honest, guys, this JL deserves an LT, in my opinion. I don't see putting an LS in a JL for a lot of different reasons. The LTs are recognizing some advantages now with its high compression and direct injection and continuous variable valve timing. So it's going to be very interesting to see how an LT will run in a JL. They did make the JL more aerodynamic. As you can see, they swept back the grill a little bit. They swept back the windshield angle. I'm really glad to see that Fiat chose to stay with a body on frame, four link suspension, live axles, manual transfer case. I just can't imagine the Wrangler not being that way if it went to independent suspension. I do believe some of these components are aluminum now. Uh, I think somebody told me the doors are aluminum. Have to check that with a magnet. Make them easier to pull off. I'm not a big fan of the Pentstar motor, but I will say with the eight speed, 
they've made a big improvement on this Penstar engine and if your Wrangler is relatively stock with these small tires you'll probably be happy with the performance once you go to 40s, 37s, armor, bumpers, all that I wonder if they got a windshield washer reservoir here yep probably right here get our same disconnect to remove the hard top I believe yeah we got the Alpine stereo in this one so there's your your woofer got some nice tether here for my kids car seats not exactly sure one of these rolls the headrest down this one and this rolls the seat down I wonder why you'd want to do that separately well doesn't really matter they've moved the mirror switch from the dash over to the door which is good put it over on left I must say that I like the electric mirrors I'm not big on fancy interiors and off-road vehicles but I always had a hard time with the JK's making the mirrors move so I do appreciate the electric mirrors doors are pretty utilitarian again I like the fact they put these nets in so that you can put junk in it they got a little storage space here which the early JK's didn't have and then later on they went to the net which which helped and I'm sure these things will evolve over time oh look at that my kids would really appreciate this we got outlets in the back didn't notice that 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 was some smart thinking on Chrysler's part because that was definitely a complaint in the JK let's take a look at this roll bar looks like most of the roll bars covered up with plastic I like the grab handles I know that there's aftermarket grab handles for the JK especially when the JK is lifted these help so that's a quick look at the JL we'll come back and get underneath this in another video this has an axle disconnect like the old older Jeeps did I'm a little disappointed Jeep still does not offer hubs I know hubs are expensive and add complexity but I personally think they drive better with the hubs unlocked that way you're not spinning that front drive shaft and maybe that was their goal when they went to the passenger side axle disconnect like the earlier Jeeps it definitely is a step up I believe it's electronic not vacuum operated but we'll find out when we get this thing in the air I'm guessing that this is functional but yeah I can see into the engine compartment I'm not sure how functional it might just be it might just be decoration but hopefully it is functional to get some hot air out so we'll come back and we'll get underneath this and check out the suspension and chassis